So I'm going to make a coin ring. Uh, this is a quarter dollar, a US quarter dollar. Uh, I want to find center on it and I'm going to drill a hole in it. You can use a punch um, to do that, but I don't have a punch. Um, but I do have a step drill bit that I can use to uh, poke a hole in this. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole and then use the step drill bit to drill for that. So it's uh, 24 millimeters in diameter, so I'm going to take one half of that, measure across, mark an X, drill a hole, then use the step drill bit to widen it up um, so that uh, I can get it on uh, a, a ring mandrel or a, a drift pin like this and then uh, start working at it. Uh, okay, so that's just my first step is to drill a hole in this. So now that I have the center mark, I'm going to take a center punch and I'm going to punch it. So I got my center punch here. Now I got a center punch there. I'm going to take a drill bit, drill a pilot hole. Unfortunately, my camera stopped recording as I was drilling the hole for this, and uh, I also explain what these little things are in the vise here. Uh, this is just two pieces of aluminum that I have in the vise with a slot cut out with uh, a, a cutoff wheel on a Dremel so it allows me to hold the quarter in the vise without marking up the quarter so all I did was I put that in here and I clamped it in if you've watched my how to make a ring from a silver spoon video where I cut out a silver spoon blank um, it's the same same uh, thing I used to hold and then I took a drill bit and drilled the pilot hole and then I went a little bigger with a larger drill bit And then I'm going to move it up to a step drill bit to drill a larger hole. And how big you make this hole is all is up to you, uh, depending on how wide you want the ring to be and how big your ring mandrel is that it's going to fit on. I'm going to start it out on this drift pin, which is a little smaller than my ring mandrel, and then uh, work it work its way down, and you'll see that when I get to that. So I'm going to keep drilling this out. Until it fits. I think that should about do it, and it does. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a file. I'm just going to take a round half moon file or a completely round file and I'm just going to clean this up you don't want any stress cracks so you want to clean up any little micro cracks that this might have and the coin I'm using here is a 1989 ideally it would be nice to use a silver coin but I couldn't find any um, so I'm just going to experiment with this. Fence Kid, um, he's a guy on YouTube and uh, I've watched a few of his videos and his are, he, uh, he does a great job so I encourage you to check out his videos as well. Okay, now that I have that smoothed out and all the burrs taken off, or almost taken off,
There, that feels good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to anneal the coin. I just want to clean this side up just a tad bit more. That's looking okay. So this will be a pretty thick ring. I'm going to anneal this with a torch. So what I'm going to do is heat it and then quench it in water. I have some water over here. So I'm going to zoom out here. So I've quenched it. Now, for you, for those of you out there who feel it's necessary to make a comment that uh, I'm hardening the coin, that is not the case. Um, do your research. That only works for ferrous metals, and specifically ferrous metals that are over, uh, uh, well, are high carbon metals. That's how uh, you can harden steel to make a knife. Um, so that does not harden this, that this heating it and quenching it anneals it. So only works for high carbon steel. All right, so now I'm going to just reset the camera and start pounding on this, tapping on this on the ring mandrel with a rubber mallet. I should say a, a, I should say a nylon mallet like this um, and just start working away at it. Uh, hopefully you don't hear all the wind. There's kind of a storm going on outside right now, so um, hopefully that's not getting picked up by the mic too badly. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mallet, my nylon mallet here, and just slowly start tapping on this and working it down on the on the mandrel. Work evenly and slowly, and I'm working on a piece of wood here and putting some pressure on it this way, just tapping at it and rotating it. Already you can kind of see that there's starting to be a bend in it. Keep working at it, and what will happen, this will work harden, so it will get progressively harder as you're working it, the metal will become tougher and tougher. It works hardens, and then you'll have to anneal it again. Already, there's nice cup on it already. Keep working at it. Try not to smack on it too hard and bend one side down more than the other. You just want to work at it evenly or else you'll get kinks in the coin and that's no good. So already we're getting a nice bend on it. It's working real nice. What you can also do, because the circumference of the outside versus the inside, this is going to stretch. And so this inside needs to stretch to be the same as the outside in order to bend down to be like a ring. So if you can imagine, 
this is going to be the same length as the outside once we're done beating it down. So what can speed this up as well is you can take a piece of conduit or pipe like this. This one's a little long. I'll have to cut it back. But I'm going to tap on it on the end here. And then that'll work this down as well and help open up that hole. Now I'm doing it this way so I can show you on camera. But normally I would set it on my anvil and then kind of tap down on it because I can get more, um, more energy into this. Um, but for now I'm just going to tap on it like this. And already I've moved it down probably about half a half a centimeter already. So I'm going to keep working at this, but that's basically the general idea. I'm going to kneel it one more time, and I'm going to work at it. Um, you just keep working at it like this. I won't bother to show very much of it on camera now until I work it down onto the next, um, onto the actual ring mandrel. So this is a drift pin, like I said. Um, so just because it has a smaller opening and then I'll start working on the on the ring mandrel. When I get it on the ring mandrel I'll come back and show you as I'm working that down. Right now I'm gonna work at it like this some more facing downward but then eventually I'm gonna flip it upside down and then work at it as well. Like that. Okay so I've worked it down from the from the drift pin onto the ring mandrel. If you drill out the center hole big enough, you can get it right on the ring mandrel um, and just work at it from there too. Uh, so next, uh, I've annealed it. I'm going to keep working at it. I cut a piece of conduit so that's a little shorter. I'm going to put that on like that and I'm going to take my mallet and I'm going to tap at it to work it down to make up some of the, the to spread out the inside a bit. And at the same time, it's going to work that down, the edge of the coin down. So, Okay, so we're making our way down a bit. Keep at it. come along nicely. I've already worked it down almost one and a half ring size, maybe even two. There, we're down to uh, a five now, just about. So as you can see, it's getting closer and closer. So I'm going to work this down as far as I can, like this. There, that's getting down there. So I'm going to pop this off and anneal it again. As you can see, it's getting nice and round and even all the way around. So I'll anneal this. There, now I'm going to have to start working it this way. I'm going to have to flip it around and start working at it. So now what I've done is I flipped the ring around so it was going down like this. I'm going to flip it around and go that way. So I'm going to focus in on this now. And then I'm just going to hold it in my hand and I'm just going to work at it slowly. This will take some time. 
be patient. So I'm going to work at this for a bit and I'll come back. So I'm rotating it all the way around as I'm hitting it. Okay, I've worked it down to about, now I'm over just over an 8. Um, I'm going to use my PVC and I'm going to hold it on one edge because now it's getting harder and harder to, because it's slipping over it, or it will anyway. I'm going to hold one edge down on it like this and I'm going to work at it on either way, on one side, the other side. So one side like that, one side like that, just to work it down to stretch out that bottom some more. And what that'll do is that'll draw that top part in. Now at this point, I'm not beating at it like crazy. I'm just going gentle taps, evenly around, switching sides. And it's working its way down. Now I'm down to like just over eight and a half. And as you can see, this is getting closer and closer. So I'll keep working at it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I'm almost down to a 9 now. So that's looking really nice. You could almost call that done. You could keep working at that. And you could polish it at this point. Keep working at it even at that top a bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working at this. Uh, and then I'm going to put it, and I'm going to put a bevel on the top using a doming block. I'm going to bevel it in on the bottom and the top, just so it's a little bit smoother. You don't have to do that, but if you have access to a doming block, um, that makes it a lot, a lot nicer looking. And this is a, this is a doming block. So what it'll do is the ring will sit in like that, and I'm going to put it in a vise, and I'm going to put pressure on it and we'll push it in, inward, and round it out. Uh, this is optional. If you have one, or if you buy one, I got this from China. It was a pretty cheap. Um, you could do that. Or you could call this ring done and uh, polish it and wear it. Um, you know, sand it to take the edges off with some wet dry sandpaper or a sanding sponge. Um, okay, I'm going to keep working on it a bit and then uh, put it in the doming block and polish it. Okay, so now I've worked the ring to where I want it on the ring mandrel. I have my doming block and I'm going to put a curve or, um, a round edge on the on this ring. So I'm going to find a spot on the doming block where it fits nicely. And I think right there is about, we'll do it. I've taped a piece of aluminum here as a sacrificial piece for the ring to butt up against. I don't want to go directly on steel, 
um, because the steel is a lot softer than the co I mean, sorry, a lot harder than the copper and the alloy in this, that uh, it'll end up just ruining that. So now I'm going to hold this up against quite like that. You want it with as much even pressure or make it as even as possible and then just slowly crank your vise. Make sure you're looking down on it that it looks even here. So I have it pretty even there now. Now I'm just going to add some pressure. Just crank on the vise a little bit. hopefully not ruin this. I've ruined a few doing this and it's there it's starting to bend it in. Oops, I don't have that in frame. Um, it's starting to bend it in. So I'll keep doing that. I'm getting a nice bend all the way around. I might leave it at that soon. I don't want to go too much more. I might ruin it. It's not, it's pretty even. I'll do one more. So that's not looking too bad. So you still make up the lettering on it, United States of America. It's looking nice. I might just polish that. I'm gonna just sand around and finish it up. Maybe I'll, not bad for my, uh, I don't know, fifth or sixth attempt at this. So uh, it, it gets better with practice. I got the ring to where I want it after the doming block. And if you need to resize it, if you've gone too far, if you are using a doming block, again, you can use your PVC conduit, your plastic pipe to knock this down and tap it to make it bigger. Uh, if you made the ring too big, there's not really any way of making it smaller except for in the doming block, which also I should mention, if you are using a doming block, you want to go probably one size bigger um, than what uh, you want to, what your uh, final size will be. So say if you want like an eight in, uh, an eight, number eight for ring size, you want to go up to like a number nine. Because when you put it in the doming block, it pushes on the material and then it, it caves it in, so it, it brings it in. I didn't bring this one in too much. I kind of like the look of that, so I'm happy with that. I did a little bit on the bottom, and I brought that in a tiny, tiny bit, just to uh, just to even it out a bit. Now, I got it to where I want it for my finger. Uh, I'm going to take some sandpaper, and I'm using, I believe this is uh, this is like a 400 grit, maybe 320. And it's a wet dry sandpaper. And I'm just going to just lightly go around. And I'm going to work on the inside a little bit too. I'm just going to work the edge. Try not to polish here too much on the actual ring itself. If you were careful and you're using a rubber mallet or a nylon mallet, hopefully this isn't too dented. Um, mine isn't dented at all and you can still see the lettering. So when I polish this, you'll see the lettering come out. If you're not concerned about the lettering, you could just use a regular hammer and beat at this on the ring mandrel and just get a smooth ring and then you could grind out with sandpaper, you could polish it away 
you could stick it on a drill, like on a on a spline on a drill, with a, a piece of pipe, and then spin it to even it out. That's another option. I did that in the uh, silver spoon video that you could check out on my channel as well. So I'm just going to even out all the edges here, so there's nothing sharp. Everything's nice and smooth. I'm going to do the inside a little bit. And I think I'm pretty good with that. Just got a little tiny edge right here. I'm going to go grab the polishing compound and my Dremel. And we're going to buff this to bring out a nice little shine and the ring will be complete. So now I got the Dremel out. Hopefully the light is okay in here. Maybe I'll resituate the camera a little bit like that. And I got Dremel with a little polishing pad on it. I got some of this polishing compound for cars, aluminum polish for uh, rims. Um, this stuff here is really good mothers. I used to use it to polish alloy rims on my on some of my cars. Um, this stuff's really nice. So I'm just loading up the disc here a little bit. It's going to fling everywhere, but uh, hopefully I can start this off and not make too much of a mess. So I'm going to put do the inside first. see it's nice and black so that's removed some metal let's wipe this down see what it looks like Ooh, it's pretty shiny I'll get some better pictures of this when I'm done but for now I'll just polish it up so I'll do the the outside now. I'll add a little more compound to this, but already it's really popping. It's looking really nice. I'm just going to go grab something to make this a little easier to the polish. I'm just going to stick this on a little mandrel thing. So this is the little ma uh, mandrel thing that I've made out of a piece of aluminum and just put masking tape and tape around here to build it up so it holds the ring. Normally what I could do is I stick this in a drill and then I could use it to put on a piece of sandpaper and smooth out a ring. So that works well too if you want to make a smooth ring. So if you can imagine that. Sandpaper or some type of abrasive compound, put this in a drill, and it, it acts like a little mini lathe. But in my case, it's just used to help hold this on here while I polish it instead of polishing away at my fingers. So I'm going to add a little bit more to this and just spread it around. There we have it. Nice and polished. So we can zoom in here. My light in here isn't very good, so I'll go get some better light, but it's really nice and shiny and I'll take some pictures of it and append it at the end of the video here. But uh yeah, so there you go. That looks really nice. I'm quite happy with that. So I got a little better light in here. But as you can see, yeah, it came out really great. 
nice and shiny. You can still make out all the lettering. Lettering. That is how you make a coin ring. So thanks for watching. I'll pin some uh, pictures at the end here of a uh, close-up so you can get a better view. But uh, yeah, it came out really nice. I'm really pleased with that. And again, um, the most ba like the ring mandrel is probably the only tool you might need to get. Um, all the other tools are readily available: mallet, you know, Dremel, um, a drill to make the hole. You could use a punch. Um, you know, there's a few different ways of doing that. But yeah, uh, and the doming block would be the most uh, the most uh, exotic, I guess, uh, thing to you could uh, you could do without. You don't have to have it to make uh, to make a good ring. Um, you could just make a basic ring without it. I just used it just to bring in, like I said, the two the two ends here. All right. Thanks for watching.